about the new trophies a little bit, maybe? Uh, so we're definitely going to sure. talk about the new trophies uh, once we get to uh, the wharf map. Quentin's going right. to come in and talk about them. Um, for now, we're <coughs> just going to go over to Coal Mine and play a match there. So this is what I was saying earlier. This is my favorite map in the new, uh, the new oh. map pack. Uh, so this is the loadout uh, Quentin's going to use. Uh, it's kind of a long-range loadout. Um, he's going to do hunting rifle, uh, nine mil. Uh, he's using the launcher, which is great. Coal mine, it's a, uh, you know, it has some longer sight lines. Uh, and launcher's going to help him take guys out behind cover. Uh, he's got explosion expert to increase the radius of that, um, those explosions from the launcher. There we go. And he's also using awareness, uh, so he's going to see enemy name tags pop up uh, longer range. And whenever he gets shot, he's going to see those name tags for 10 seconds. Um, so this map uh, is a map I designed, and I'm I'm kind of, I liked the idea of trying to create kind of a spiritual successor to Lakeside, which is my favorite map from yeah, retail. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I think it's a great map. And so this map is, you know, in the same space from the single player environment. Uh, it's a snowy uh, it's a coal mine area. And so there's this kind of mix of outdoor and indoor. And there's a mix of long range and short range. Right. And so I think what, what this map does pretty well is that it gives you a lot of contrast. It's, you know, instead of just picking, you know, one loadout and saying, okay, like, this is my medium range loadout, I'm going to do fine. This is, a, this is a map where you really have to mix things up because sometimes you go outside and there's some longer sight range, sight lines, and then you go inside and it's a much tighter yeah. experience. And then, and they're very different experiences too because once you go inside uh, those, these uh, warehouses and stuff, it's just uh, it's a very interesting experience uh, compared to the, to the fronts that you're going to get on the exterior. Sure Absolutely. Thing. So uh, right off the bat, he's got kind of two big choices. You can go left to the outside upper area or you can go right into the... Um, the coal mine area with what we call the generator room, or you can go down the middle, uh, which right. is kind of a uh, little more open, but it's got this uh, bridge over the top, which is one of the big power positions of the map. Now th that that whole bridge, all this coal mine stuff, is, is coming from the single player uh, level. Uh, that it was, in my opinion, the hardest uh, aspect of, of the single player, where you are playing as a character with uh, David and fighting off all the infected that come in here. It's a very memorable uh, moment in the game for me. Yeah, absolutely. It was a really cool fight, and so we took that that space, that bridge area right. where all the infected were dropping in, and we used that as a kind of a key uh, connecting structure in the map. Totally. Um, this interior area with uh, all the generators and stuff is kind of uh, it reminds me a little bit of the dam uh, with the the turbines up in the up on the top bridge area. Absolutely. Gate otherwise, it's actually it's kind of similar to that too. It's the figure eight structure. Right. Uh, it creates some really cool uh, setups. And the dam is my favorite map from uh, from retail as well. <coughs> Quentin decided to bail there. That's a good idea. Let's get the I liked a lot of the natural cover, the rocks and such. And, uh, ooh. Well, looks like he's getting flanked. People are asking, is this Lakeside Part 2? Or... A question from the Twitch stream is this, is this map Lakeside Part 2? Uh, you know, it's Hold you on. look at it that way, but it's, it's pretty different actually in the way it plays because it has those much tighter uh, interior spaces as well. So it's right. really uh, all outside with just a couple small back. interiors. And uh, this map is you know, quite a bit more varied. And it's also got that verticality element to it where you've got right. these big hills and you've got the, the bridge. So it's, it, it plays pretty differently. Spiritual successor is, I think, more of the right, right terminology uh, for how it relates to, to uh, Lakeside. And also, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be seeing um, environmental effects uh, kind of similar to uh, Lakeside, correct? Yeah, so on this side, there's you know, this, uh, all this fog and snow that comes in. Uh, and so this map, there's a snowstorm that kicks up. Uh, well, wow, it's in trouble. Hurry up! We're out of time! Uh, so we don't have some uh, single player maps, like the hotel or the hospital or something like that. Uh, so just briefly to finish off the, the snowstorms, there is a snowstorm that comes up in this map and uh, it's a little different than the Lakeside one though, it's less foggy and it's more snowy, so there's a lot more kind of snow flurries that happen, um, and it doesn't obscure your vision to quite the same distance, and it's a little more atmospheric. Um, we had a question from the Twitch stream about how come we didn't use some of the other single player uh, environments like the hospital. Uh, we certainly prototype some of those spaces. Uh, one of our other designers um, actually started a prototype, but uh, ultimately uh, you know, we decided to pick spaces that we felt would translate best into gameplay. And some of those spaces like the hospital were you know, uh, 
extremely heavy on the interiors and multi right. floors and stuff, and you know they didn't work as well. So oh, no. we pick we pick locations that really lend themselves to good combat or good gameplay because ultimately that, um, our multiplayer is about our gameplay, and we want to pick the best you know locations possible. Ooh, nice night. Yeah, so you can see here, this outdoor area is a little longer slight lines. One less to worry. Oh, oh get the launcher. launcher nice. Execution. I think the, the, the launcher's got to be my favorite gun in the new, yeah. uh, yeah, the new it's, DLC. It's a great gun. It's just very situational. You have to use it very carefully yeah. uh, to make use of it. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh yes! Oh, yeah, <laughs> that has got to be the best execution ever. Cool. Um, so when you have a silencer, will somebody with the awareness skill be able to hear it? A uh, question for the Twitch stream is: uh, If you're using a silencer, does someone uh, using the awareness skill uh, hear the silencer? Um, there's no difference actually in how the uh, awareness affects silence, uh, the sounds of silenced weapons. You're going to be able to hear them the same distance as any other player. They're still going to um, not show up on the radar for those players. Uh, what awareness really gives you is that uh, visibility in the space of can you can you spot who the enemies are quickly in that space. A lot of players, uh, you know, if you're not sitting super close to your TV, you might have trouble spotting a small enemy that's only partially exposed. And awareness just gives you that name tag unless you see them a lot more easily. I got you. Oh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh. It's going on execution <laughs> rampage. <laughs> it's so hard to use the, the flamethrower, too. That's a pro right there. Uh, another question, are we doing anything to this uh, full auto rifle in the patch? Is it being changed at all? What was the question? It's a new weapon. Uh, it's there was a question from the Twitch screen about the full auto rifle being, uh, is it being changed in the patch? Uh, it's a new weapon, so it's not it's being changed at all. This is the first time it's being released. They're probably confusing it with the assault rifle. Uh, maybe, the, maybe they're thinking of the assault rifle, which has not been changed. It's, uh, okay, yeah. it's the same as it was before. So what's Quentin going to do here? He's going to try and... By the way, a big shout out to our QA team who are just showing some really professional playing right here. Okay, got it. Yeah, they're good players. <laughs> um, so the smoke bomb vault exploit, they're calling it. So there you see that he's using awareness, and that player who had attacked him, he saw where that player was going because that player's name tag was following them for 10 seconds here. So the other part of the skill helping you. Oh, somebody's trying to snipe on the bridge. Oh. Bridge is definitely a key uh, sniping position. It's gonna be awesome to put some, uh, drop some bombs right up at the at the top of that thing, unless you're using your listen mode and watching oh, out for look that. At that. So you can see he's, he's comboed uh, in his loadout, his combo damage marker for the launcher. So when he marked that, when he uh, hit that target with the explosion, actually marked the target as well, which is really really useful. Do we have a question? Uh, yeah, so the smoke bomb bolts um, exploit people are calling it. Did we do anything to fix that on that match? I'm out, Jay! Question about the smoke bomb smoke bolt exploit from the stream. We talked about this last stream, and yes, that is indeed fixed uh, in this patch. You. So it was a bug. Uh, when, if you're in the middle of a vault animation, you're immune to a smoke bomb stun, and that's been fixed. And so now what will happen is you'll actually uh, you kind of Warp back to the very beginning of your vault uh, instantly and get go into the stun immediately. So smoke bombs are still effective against vaulting players. Hold on, I can patch you up. Have we seen the flurry yet? I really want to see that flurry. Uh, yeah. Oh, it already happened. I think it already happened. This Someone's probably inside. I think. Yeah. Some of that's going on. Wow, this is a close game. Here. Yeah, the cool thing is, even though like it, it you know, it's very similar to Lakeside, it, it still ha you can still tell a very, very huge difference between the two maps. I don't think we'll ever people will ever, you know, get confused between the two maps, you know, at all. Especially with a lot more like kind of industrial. Uh, we'll keep an eye out. Stuff like these trucks and machinery and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So Clint's trying to gear up his launcher here. Just reloaded. Uh, where is he going to use it? Keep an okay. eye out. Oh, Got people it. People on the bridge. Can you get that off? So he's going to try and go up there and shoot into the bridge, which is a small area, so he'll probably get a lot of splash damage. Oh, nice. 
Did that guy fall down? Oh, oh he went he, down. I think he jumped down. He jumped down right as he got hit. So that's the only cool thing about the bridge is if you're in trouble, you can just bail and jump out the window there. I still heard the, the he took damage though, even though like, he was bolting out. That's true, yeah. yeah. Splash oh, beautiful. Q trait. <laughs> that's one of my that's my second favorite execution right there. After that awesome launcher execution. Yeah. That's great. So Aaron, uh, you weren't here for the, the question, but what's your favorite uh, map of the new uh, Reclaim Territories map pack? Sure, everyone's always partial to the maps they design. Of right? course, of I mean, course. I love playing Kingdom yeah. as well. Um, Same. But I actually think Worf might be... That, I, I was torn. I was like, oh man, is it Worf or is it Coal Mine? I wouldn't Coal Mine, but Worf's uh, Worf before we awesome. next. Yeah. I'm going to see that one next. It's a really tight, short range map with a lot of stealth opportunities. Uh, so... <laughs> oh, machete! <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, like, I love playing stealth and sneaking around and trying to get shift kills. Yeah. And morph is great that. Way. It's awesome. Got a question. Um, does damage marker penetrate covert training three? So, the question for the Twitch stream was Does the damage marker skill um, work against covert training? So, if you've got covert training three that prevents you from being marked, uh, and then somebody else has damage marker and they, they damage you, do you get marked? And no, you do not. Covert training three it still prevents you from getting marked. And the player with damage marker still gets the notification saying, sorry, you can't mark this player, they've got covert training. So if you want to be super stealthy and never get marked, you can still set covert training and use it. Oh boy, this is going to be interesting. Oh, oh, oh nine times. <laughs> One left strike. He wasn't right that fireman squad right there. Oh, he's got, he's got he's the. Down. All right, nice. Uh, uh, Surprised that guy didn't use his upgraded I, Exactly what I saw, yeah, that nice little I sparkle. I guess he had two players attacking him, so it yeah. would have been tough. So we got another question that's kind of a compliment, but they want to know how we design our spawning points, and they think they're really well done. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we had a question from the Twitch stream about the spawn system and how we design the spawn points. Um, and they like them, which is good. Uh, we've actually improved the spawning actually in this patch. Uh, we, we've had some problems in the past, especially on maps like Bill's Town, where uh, like two players would die and then they would respawn at the end of the map very close together. And so we've put in a fix for that and they will spawn much further away now. Uh, so we've made some improvements overall to the spawn system, um, but it's still working fairly well. And uh, it works uh, pretty much. Oh, oh flamethrower. Flame uh, so the way it works is there's kind of spawn points around the map in a ring, and they're all weighted differently based on a bunch of different factors, like are your allies close to them, uh, are there enemies close to them which are going to downweight them, you don't want to spawn there, uh, are there uh, dead allies that are going to have just recently been killed, you don't want to spawn there, so those get downweighted, so there's a whole bunch of different weights, uh, and there's an algorithm that picks the points with the highest weights. That guy messed up, he had the upgraded. Yeah, he had the upgraded, but he didn't use it. So we've answered this question quite a few times, but it's always good to repeat it. Um, why aren't there any effect infected in multiplayer? So you can see Quentin using the sniper position there uh, from the bridge, trying to spot if the enemies had spawned down there. That would have been a good spot to kind of right, hold them back as they were yeah. coming up. Um, question with the Twitch screen about why are there no infected in multiplayer? Uh, this question we've answered many times. Um, but, uh, oh, we didn't get the stun off. Uh, so we certainly would love to try and experiment with some of that stuff, but it really there are some huge technical uh, issues there preventing us. Uh, specifically memory, you know, we're really pushing the PS3 to its limit, and uh, there's just not enough memory to have uh, NPCs in the map along with all these human players. Right. Um, in addition, there's all the kind of CPU overhead of running all these NPCs at the same time as running all these human players. So and then balancing gameplay as well. Yeah. So technically, yeah. there was there was some huge barriers there. Not to mention there was uh, you know the time investment in trying to yeah. create that experience. We definitely looked into it. Trust us. We yeah. we wanted that too, really bad. We did. Ultimately, I think though you know because we focused on a smaller you know set of modes, we were able to really you know get them to a point where they were delivering that kind of survival aspect that we wanted to the game. A really good core of gameplay. Yeah, capturing the core gameplay and the yeah. tone that we we're after. Uh, cool. So we're going to go on to the next map now. And